Today I'm going to talk about the Mandela Effect. I've been getting a lot of emails and even phone calls from people asking me, please make a video about this. And it seems like there are a lot of YouTube videos and other internet articles about this thing called the Mandela Effect. Many of them say that CERN is involved and is actually manipulating time or somehow accessing alternative realities. And yeah, well, this is what the scientists at CERN are actually saying. So, if anyone's saying that, they're only quoting what CERN are talking about on their website. You know, so he's straight away he's making out as if uh, people who notice changes or notice that the Mandela effect is to do with uh, changes in on the earth and and all of that, which he doesn't mention. He only mentions some of the the so-called changes in the King James Bible. He doesn't mention the changes in the other Bibles, and he clearly hasn't looked at the uh, Mandela effect in any great depth. And that through this, they are able to actually change the way things used to be, and even changing the Bible from what it actually used to say. Is this true? Well, first, let's define the Mandela effect. The Mandela effect is a term for where a group of people all misremember the same detail. Misremember the same detail. So, which side is it then? So you'd have to liken it to a woman who uh, comes home and uh, has a panic attack, calls the police and says, my home has been broken into. And then the policemen show up and they say, well, how do you think the burglars got in? And she's like, well, I'm not really sure. Did you leave any windows open? No. Any spare keys? Not really. Uh, anything taken from the house? Not that I've seen so far. And then she comes away with, uh, well, the lamp seems to be over there before I left. And, you know, uh, the the napkin over there on the table was, was folded and now it's uh, lying on the floor. That type of thing. And so, what can you really prove from that? Uh, that there has been someone there or there hasn't been someone there so that's what we're trying to deduce if there has been changes or not and a lot of us are, are very adamant about certain Mandela effects and I think as I say there's about a hundred that I think uh, millions of people literally millions of people if you took the questions to them about mirror mirror on the wall um, about you know interview with a vampire about um, life is like a box of chocolates, they would they would hundred percent answer these questions um, as as we see it. Okay, it's just that this Mr. Badger here, even though you know he's combed his hair this morning, um, I just don't believe is honest enough to admit these things, and it's an honesty thing here because I would say about a hundred percent of the people I've spoken to have noticed changes. That's 100% of people that I've, I've asked questions to regarding Mandela effects agree with me. Now whether they agree that CERN are part of it, whether they agree to call it the Mandela effect, some people call it the Jesus effect because they, they know something supernatural is happening. They can't explain it, right? But this guy is making out that if you see changes you're some kind of paranoid schizophrenic. That I, I don't accept this um, assessment from Mr. Badger. Let him continue. Event or physicality. It is named after the instance in which a large group of people all shared the same memory that Nelson Mandela died prior to his actual 2013 death, usually sometimes in sometime in the 1980s. Yeah, I mean, that's that's how the Mandela effect is obviously defined, but including myself, um, most of the people on YouTube that have watched their videos, that they do remember that he, he left jail. So, we are not really part of that, but I've, I've explained that before, is probably, there was a news report released, I've explained all that, but it doesn't go into depth. So basically, the Mandela effect is remembering something you heard and thinking it was true some way but then later they tell you uh, well no it was really this way 
So it's thinking in your mind, well, I thought it was like this. But now they're telling us, no, it was like this. Well, Mr. Badger, that's because we're not all robots. We're, we're human beings and uh, we have our own memories, we have our own experiences in life. And so we're all free to remember things the way we remember them. There's no blueprint, we're not like uh, robots that have just come off a line and you know a few of them are, are, are defaulty you know because they remember things differently. Just treat it like it is I would say and remember that these are human beings and that they deserve uh, respect. Um, I just wonder if he respects anyone except th those in his little um, Bible group. I'm not sure. And what this does, it questions your ability to remember things. It also attacks the King James Bible. A lot of people like to say, well, CERN is... Well, wh what about the, you know, the countries and the, the continents that have been moving? It doesn't mention that, does he? I mean, all he's concerned about, quite nobly, is the King James Bible. He's trying to defend the Word of God, which is noble. But... Uh, he's, you know, what about all the other changes in the world? He doesn't even touch them, you see. So probably he does notice some changes. I would suspect that he does notice some changes, but he doesn't want to talk about it. That's what I think, because this is the only video that uh, Robert Robert Breaker has made about this. I call him Mr. Badger, because I think <laughs> I was just watching the Chronicles of Narnia, and I thought when I watched this video. When I started seeing a couple of his videos, which some of them are very good, I mean, he goes into some. He doesn't go into deep detail of things, but he goes into draws out things quite well. But he's abys abysmally failed in this video because, you know, while he's got a lot of uh, stuff going on in his other videos, the, this just remains blank uh, most of the video. It's involved, <laughs> CERN. Is all it's all about CERN. Somehow they can travel back and change things. You know, something my dad always used to say is, "Get in the Bible, son, because there's a good word in the Bible." And the word in the Bible is discern. <laughs> the Bible tells us we should discern certain things. I think he's just dissing CERN here because he's not talking about CERN at all. You know, why is the government's plowing trillions or? billions of dollars into these projects so they can find invisible particles you know why are they doing this just to spend money just so they can say oh we found the god particle come on China's building a larger um, collider uh, as we speak so so why are they plowing so much money and resources and manpower into this if, if all it's doing is finding out invisible little particles floating around of course, there's, there's, there's hidden benefits that we're not told about, but in fact, the CERN scientists um, are explaining a lot of a lot of it, you know. And uh, as we know, Satan sugarcoats a lot of of his lies, so he's going to tell you s some truth to do with it. He's not; they're not going to tell you everything they've found regarding using this machine, but they'll tell you some things. And they're talking about, um, you know, different dimensions and all that type of thing. So. What can you really say? And to me, this backs up the Word of God. You know, it does talk about there's a spiritual realm and other things like that. So it kind of backs it up for me, you know, what's already, what the Bible already teaches. But I know he teaches on the giants, but he doesn't teach about them coming back in the last days, as Jesus said. You know, Jesus taught from Matthew 24, the last days will be like the days of Noah. So Genesis 6, 4, there was giants on the earth. And also after that, so I, I bet that I think he does teach about the, the the giant skeletons being found on the earth, but I don't think he teaches that in the in the very last days before Jesus coming. You know that these giants will be sort of uh, active again in some way, whether they're in the the militaries of the world or wh whatever way they're going to be involved in which there's a few videos online which they're already being involved in some of these things. Thanks. So what I want to do today in this video, as briefly as possible, is let's discern the Mandela Effect and see if it is possible that CERN could really change the Bible. One email I got summed it up best. 
It says, I was wondering if you heard anything on the Mandela effect. It's getting a lot of attention online, and it's attacking the King James Bible. They say CERN is behind it. I See, I just think you got to have more discernment about this because... Uh people that notice changes are not attacking the King James Bible. Most of them actually use the King James Bible like myself. Um, I, I've actually, people that will testify if they're honest, that I've actually clung on to the King James Bible for about 15 years once it was revealed to me that that was God's Word in English. Um, but even I notice changes, I've been using it for over 15 years um, probably more than that obviously I've had King James Bibles since before I've even been saved so I've, I've read parts of it but uh, you know the parable of the the wineskins all of that stuff they're very obvious to me and uh, I just wonder as well I know he teaches about spiritual gifts but he says that some are not for today so he's just one of these guys that is sort of like he's a people pleaser this guy Mr. Badger is a people pleaser um, he wants to stay in with the KGV only which mostly don't um, agree that the spiritual gifts are for today that they were just for the book of Acts or just for the first 12 disciples or so or, you know, which is actually says in the book of Acts 3000 um, Jews started speaking in tongues so I mean all, all of that is just there's heavenly tongues and there's, there's all different types of tongues there is demonic tongues as well but you got to have discernment this is why you got to have discernment and not throw the baby out with the bath water which I believe he's doing in this video I see a lot of King James Bible believers indulging in it kinda got me looking into it also some of the verses they talk about made me scratch my head and question it too if you do get time to research it please share your thoughts on it at this point I know God is in control and his word will always be with us I know God preserved his word for us, but this Mandela effect is sweeping through the church and they're buying into the changes that they claim have been made. Really crazy stuff. I mean, they believe God's word, the King James Bible, has been changed overnight. Well, I mean, the first thing that the King James Bible teaches us is that Jesus Christ is the living word of God. You know, Jesus himself says, those who take away from this word their place shall be taken out of the new Jerusalem which sounds to me like the the Jehovah Witness I spoke to a couple of weeks ago you know his uh, spirit was very much uh, exposed and um, for him to go and repent about that Jesus also said those who add to the word the plagues in this book shall be added to them and so Jesus anticipates that Satan is going to start meddling with uh, the written word of God this is the prophecy that Jesus spoke according to the written word of God which they haven't got round to changing yet but we, we as born again believers in Yeshua the Messiah you know Jesus Christ uh, remember these things and what if in already you know I, I, the, the previous video I did that was uh, the parable of the um, talents has been I believe very much tampered with in, in the gospel of Luke um, anyhow that it once read this way, and now it reads something different. I guess it has to do with time travel too, that they went back in time, with this gigantic machine they call CERN, to the printing presses and altered our Bible so that it would be something, so it would read something else. Well again, this is an assumption. I mean, um, people are trying to get to the bottom of it to try and find out things. But if, if, you're, if you're finding particles which existed from the beginning of time, you know, a uh, fraction of seconds after an experiment. We don't know the effects and we don't know the programming that's going on by these D-Wave computers. Are they able just to simply manipulate particles that has a ripple effect, you know, from the time of the experiment all the way back to the beginning of the existence of that particular um, occurrence in time, you know? So maybe they don't need to go back in time. Maybe they can just manipulate it all from, you know, uh, this dimension. You know, we, we don't know what, what really is going on, but we, we do know that there's changes. We're honest enough to see that. I know, totally nuts. Like Back to the Future Part 4 or something. <laughs> that would be a good sequel. Ha ha ha. In quotes. So one viewer, this 
kind of like all the emails I get, they pretty much say the same thing. Have you heard of the Mandela effect and how they say CERN is a machine that man has built in which man can literally time travel or somehow take us to alternate realities in which things are different than they used to actually be? Another email viewer, viewer wrote, Pastor Breaker, how are you? God bless you. This is going to sound crazy, but when I checked all of this, I thought of you first. Have you heard of what they are calling the Mandela Effect? I have found out about it in the last couple of days, and it is where they say the running of CERN has changed some things, spelling of names, printed words, things like that. I really don't think anything of it, but now many are saying the words in the Bibles have changed. Many can see it, and just as many can't see the changes. I've made sure to stay in the Word, and that's the most important for me, but I've looked up the Bible. Stay in the Word means that you're staying in the Spirit of Jesus Christ. You're staying in His love, that you're showing respect to your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, that you're not just, uh, you know, throwing them under a bus because they, uh, you know, remember things differently. Hallelujah. Um, so it's kind of like this, I mean, uh, he goes on about this uh, for quite a while, obviously. It doesn't really go into much depth. For the verses as they were. So how could someone believe this theory and say, no, but CERN has changed them, if I remember? If others that went to Bible school with me and we studied the scriptures remember? Sure, I mean, this is a big point that, uh, yeah, a lot of these um, changes, um, you know, this guy remembers them back in the days he was at Bible College back in the 90s. That's all fine. You know, I, I find that pretty cool, but he does he does sort of scratch his head on a couple. Um, but he doesn't go into it deeply enough for me. He, he just goes through about t three or four different changes within there, which you can watch this video. I'll pr try and leave the link below. How could it have happened? Did others go into an alternate reality and we just somehow stayed out of it? <laughs> Or could it be that this theory of the Mandela effect is nothing but attacking the King James Bible to try to cause people to doubt the word? See, well, see, that's not what the purpose of it is. I mean, uh, see, there's atheists, there's 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 uh, people who are into geography. Like I remember, my dad asked a question back in about the eighties, I think it was. Um, he asked me a quiz question. Is America bigger than China? You know, he used to do things like that. And I, I, I just thought that America was bigger than China. But he told me China was bigger. Now, America is bigger than China in the landmass. <clears throat> so there's been changes within the landmasses. Now, you can't use a time machine to literally change the size of continents. You just, you just can't do that. So there must be other factors, either within this thing here, or, or, or um, perhaps there's other instruments uh, that we haven't really fully investigated yet. There might be videos of them out there. But how can you literally move Australia? I mean, I had a dream that Australia was being moved north. I saw it was being moved north. So I can see that um, I got up one morning and I saw it. You know, the Holy Spirit um, really showed me that these things are happening so I don't know if CERN has a thing to do with it but I believe it's to do with some sort of angelic powers maybe CERN are responsible for bringing angelic powers through they've got keys to some sort of keys to releasing fallen angels and these angels are coming out I, and and the other thing is there's some Christians that think that God is the one who's doing it that, that Jesus Christ the, the, the God of heaven is the one who's um, moving things around but ultimately the Bible teaches that God has the final say he's got the final authority so if you read the book of Revelation chapter 9 you know it's the angel from heaven that comes down and and releases you know um, one of the, the bound angels you see so it's an angel from heaven that does that it's the powers of heaven that are in control of anything here on the earth okay so I mean I'll keep giving God glory. I, I'm not, you know, Satan is uh, busy. Obviously, there's 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 changes being done in the natural realm and um, in, in the earthly realm. Yes, there has been some word changes within the Bibles, plural, not just the King James Bible. Um, 
why this is happening. I believe it's just the Lord showing his people that we're in the very last hours, the very last days before, before uh, you know, the Antichrist comes and changes times and laws, which I believe he's already manipulating right now, he's already doing. For Luke 17, 35, I don't see a change. It has always said that. It's always and said. It's, it's all steer man was. Lion, you would mentioned lion twice. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. I think there's an effect that really took place. No, Paul says, no, no don't let it affect you. So again, it's like, yeah, there's a robbery that took place, but there really hasn't been. So that's what he's saying, you know. Don't be shaken in mind or troubled by such a thing. Verse 3, he says, let no man deceive you by any means. You know, so okay. So somebody really does break into your house then, um, and nobody believes you. So you're just going to be uh, short, of, I guess, of some items, as it says, or it says in the King James Bible, stuff. Your stuff. Um, when the abomination of desolation is set up, don't go back into your house and get your stuff. You know, it was always stuff in the King James Bible, right? Of course it was. So here we are in the last days, and people are trying to deceive us as they try to attack the King James Bible. Nobody's trying to deceive you, my friend. Pe people have actually seen changes in the world around them, and within. Uh, not just the King James Bible, actually the, I've seen changes in the other Bibles as well to make them look more credible. I know it's an attack on the King James Bible but uh, see it's a real attack I mean it, it, you know it's like a real robbery, there's, there's proof there there is actually residue, there's a lot of Mandela um, affected people pull up a lot of residue um, uh, to prove that you know, in the past, things were a certain way, and there's thousands of witnesses and thousands of videos out there about these things. Word of God. You know, Paul warns us in the Bible about this. In Second Thessalonians chapter two, I'll read verses one, two, and part of verse three. Paul says, "Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him." that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. He says, don't be shaken in mind or troubled. Well, what people have emailed me and expressed to me is, I'm shaken in my mind, I'm troubled about... Well, see, that's a reaction. You know, nobody can control a reaction from a situation. Uh, some people handle things differently. Like some Christians would be like, "Wow, this is amazing! This is like this means that the the coming of our Lord is uh, very close because He told us to look up, or you know, when these changes happen and all of that, to look up for your redemption draws near." And then other Christians are, who are not as well rooted in the truth will have this type of Mister Badger reaction, where they're panicking and all that, and uh, storing up nuts for the winter and all that stuff, which is you know it's not wrong to do that, but. You know what I'm saying? Um, they, they, they panic, they have a spirit of fear. Nobody can control somebody's reaction. So it's, it's not the changes that uh, are in dispute here, it's people's reaction to them. Second Timothy 3, one. this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Yeah, I believe we're there. And then down to verse 13, no kidding, 2 Timothy 3.13, he says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived yeah well that's obviously about um, gainsayers and such you know people that want to self-exalt themselves so I mean that's what that's talking about 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness 17 that the man of God so again what about the book of Joshua mentioned in the Old Testament is that part of scripture this guy wouldn't say so because he believes in the Nessian Creed, right? It's just part of the Nessian Creed, whoever they were. He doesn't know if they were pagans, Catholics, whatever they were. He just believes that God gave him that book with the 66 books, and he believes that that's it. Nothing else is the Word of God. He's deceived. God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished, really. So, are you deceived? Do you buy into this false deception that the Mandela effect is real? And that oh 
false deception. I mean, I've heard of real deceptions, you know. I've heard about um, the serpent deceiving Eve in Eden, but a false deception. That's a bit of a a double neg a bit a double negative there. I would say. Pretty strange way of describing things. Yeah, I mean, obviously the Mandela effect uh, itself um, is about. Uh, there's there's a deception in it. There's there's no doubt about it. But what is the deception? Is it real? Um, are things taking place on the earth as it says in the Bible that times and laws shall be changed according to the coming of the Antichrist? Or or not? Maybe you know maybe just things will continue as they are, and you know nothing will be changed, and it'll just be like you know the uh, rapture movies, just exactly like that. Is, is these guys just perceive it's going to be like that that he thinks him and a few other people are going to be just uh, raptured up to heaven and all us guys are, are be left down here to, uh, to probably die for our faith if that's God's plan amen to that but I, I, I don't think this guy's thought it all through I think that God has um, structured his word in such a way as Jesus says um, he was questioning why do you speak in parables it's so that the wicked don't understand immediately what Jesus is talking about even though some of it is quite obvious that Jesus says it is quite layered as well so there's a lot of things Jesus teaches as I've said in this video this guy won't agree with doesn't agree with the obey doesn't agree with the spiritual gifts doesn't agree there'll be giants in the last days like the days of Noah um, doesn't believe in science but hypocritically uses uh, you know cars TVs um, computers etc etc you know so who's deceived here brother I mean we all have a level of deception I'm honest enough to say probably that you know I don't know it all and stuff like that but I'm honest enough to give an honest answer and an honest opinion and to to dig in to certain subjects and not just do half an hour videos skimming across a couple of things and then just uh, disappear back into your little hole again like Mr. Beaver you know we can no longer trust our King James Bibles no we can't trust the, the Lord you know as long as the Bible is teaching the Word of God teaching the gospel then we can still use it for teaching and reproof as the Apostle Paul said so he's just being melodramatic he's just being you know acting like a spoiled child here or do you see it and recognize it as it really is a spiritual attack by Satan okay a spiritual attack by Satan so where is the attack then if nothing has changed you know again it's just like the woman calling up the police yeah I've been robbed the police coming yeah uh, what's been taken from your house how did the robbers get in uh, well uh, uh, nothing um, everything's just sort of as it was but I just feel as if I feel as if there was people in my house I can't really explain it you know it's one of these things so uh, yeah <laughs> I think this guy's got to do a lot more um, research on CERN and really have more discernment. Nobody's saying for you to stop reading your, your King James Bible. Nobody said that. Nobody's implying that. You see? But the spirit of fear will make people act like spoiled children, like uh, all kind of strange reactions that people that people have about this. Buddy, Mandela was not what the world would have you think. A hero. From what I've studied, Mandela was a terrorist. And he was put in jail and... Well, Nelson Mandela was a communist. And so again, define terror. I mean, he's not really doing a, a good job of discerning, um, let's say, for, you know, who Nelson Mandela was. He was a communist. As we've discussed many times, even if you're a socialist, you're working for the communist agenda. He's not, he's not clearly explaining this. Rightly so. He was a revolutionary that killed people. But you know what's weird? When Mandela was put in prison, they gave him a prison number. You know what Mandela's prison number was? There's pictures on the internet where he's got this little thing here, and you know, his prison number's right there. And it's just, boom, in your face, the middle three numbers are 666. <laughs> yeah, I mean, totally, the guy was, the guy was wicked. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, 
you know, why they named uh, changes after Nelson Mandela. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, it is some sort of attack from Satan, I would say. Partly, I would say, in the natural realm. And it's being allowed by God for reasons known unto the Lord, which we have to go to the Lord and ask him uh, why it's being allowed, because the Bible clearly teaches that in the last days that the Antichrist would come and this would be the number of man it's the number of a, a man, it's the number of his name as well which we know that all the titles of the Pope has this uh, 666 you know and the military arm of the Catholic Church, the Jesuits worship this, the beast, they worship the beast we know that uh, Nelson Mandela was also a Jesuit as well you see, ties into this and so I'm not denying this, of course not, but uh, so clearly there is a link. I mean, he's made he's made some sort of worthwhile contribution to this whole thing. I would say at the end of this video, but still hasn't come to the conclusion that there has been changes. You just can't get away from it that there has been changes, whether you agree they're in the King James Bible or not. Um, if you take the King James Bible out of the equation and look at all the other changes that's happened, it'd be very very hard to deny. In fact, you have to lie, I think, um, in order to deny some of the changes that has been happening. So anyhow, uh, thanks for watching this video. Let's pray for this brother, Robert Breaker, who's got, I think, a very good basic ministry. He's got a good grasp of the gospel and everything, but uh, I, th I think that, you know, he should review some of his uh, standing about the the living word of God, um, the, the nine spiritual gifts, which I know he does videos on, are for today, just as the, the nine fruits of the Spirit. There are actually more, but the Apostle Paul just mentions nine, you know. There's, there's actually dozens, dozens of them. You know, you can list like temperance, patience, love, kindness, mercy, um, long suffering. You know, there's a lot, a lot more um, that you can think about um, that that come from the Holy Spirit, and so you should start showing, I think, more fruit of the Spirit, especially for those who are confessing Jesus Christ and notice changes, whether they be in the King James Bible or not. I think it's important for us to show the love of God to one another. Hallelujah! Thank you for watching.